friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Mary and I'm so happy to have you here for today's video where I'm gonna be talking you through, I don't know, some like new year journaling things. I really suck at like titling these videos. Whatever, y'all figure it out. I'm giving you some different options for journaling in 2024 to manifest very specific outcomes, to accomplish very specific goals. I'm gonna give you like 10 different things and 10 different ways that you could journal. You could do all of them, you could do some of them. I encourage you to like save this video or write these things down. If this is helpful for you, please share it with a friend. I think that the new year is always a really great time for us to kind of like level set, set new expectations, be really clear on our expectations and our intent for the new year. And journaling can be really helpful for some people to stay aligned on those goals and to like communicate them to the universe, track your progress, like all kinds of things. So I've got my list on my phone, so I will be kind of like looking back and forth a little bit, but y'all don't mind. Okay, so as far as how to journal, I could do a whole video on like how to journal, but I think that at a minimum, whatever feels right to you is the right answer. And what I mean by that is if you set like a really aggressive goal of like, I'm going to journal for 45 minutes every day. Well, what happens when you have a really busy day or when you work late or when you just don't feel like it, right? I want you guys to like have options. So for me personally, at a minimum, I journal every night for the full moon. It's part of my self care. I enjoy it. And sometimes I journal more than that but always at a minimum, I, I use the full moon as a reminder to take some time for introspection and to sit down and journal. So you could start there with like, okay, every full moon I'm gonna journal. Um, or you could start with like once a week or twice a month or whatever works for you. Figure out what is sustainable because rather than being like really aggressive with your goals for, for journaling and then missing them, it's better to figure out what's actually sustainable to me. What can I stick with? All right. So here are 10 different journaling prompts that you can use to help with journaling for your manifestations. The first is no surprise to anyone who follows my channel, gratitude. I'm a big fan of leveraging gratitude um, to help shift your mindset from one of lack to one of abundance because it's so easy for us to only notice the things that are absent from our life rather than the things that we have. And when we only notice the things that are absent, that very much is a lack mentality, a lack energy. And remember, with the law of attraction, the law of assumption, what you focus on persists. So if all I'm focusing on is the absence of things in my life, I will continue manifesting more lack ass things in my life. So I love gratitude for my journaling practice. I do make that a part of mine. And you could do three things, you could do 10 things, you could just leave it open-ended. Maybe I got two things, maybe I got 20, I don't know. But gratitude's really great and you could do it like things that I'm grateful for today or things I'm grateful for this year or things I'm grateful for for this situation that I'm manifesting. Whatever feels good to you, trust your intuition, but consider including gratitude as part of your journaling practice in 2024. Next, and this is really applicable if you're journaling every day, even briefly, write down your intentions. Like if you're journaling every day, you write down your intentions for the day. Here's what I plan to accomplish today. Here's what I'm going to do. Or you can do it like at the end of the day of like, here is what I have accomplished based on what I had intended, like have a little twice daily check in. Again, this is all dependent on your schedule and what you find is sustainable. If you're like me and you're doing monthly journaling, I write the things that I intend to manifest for the next month. If I wanted to do like a broader journaling practice, I could also write in just like regular life stuff. Like I intend to remodel my bathroom and including that in there will help it manifest. But for me, I just keep it focused on really high level, really big manifestations. Again, trust your gut, do what feels good to you, but consider including your intentions in your journaling practice. You can also write down your affirmations. So having your affirmations in your head and saying them out loud is awesome. There is a big connection between physically writing with pen and paper and creating new neural connections in our brain. I've read about this through the lens of college. Like when I was going to college, there was a lot of science that said writing your notes 
helps to imprint them on your brain better than typing them. Maybe that's a generational thing. I am an elder millennial. Maybe for, for Gen Zers, it's not as critical to write versus type. But for me personally, when I write things down, especially if it's before bed, it's easier for me to remember those things. So consider writing down your affirmations. If you have like 100 affirmations, you're gonna get some carpal tunnel if you do that. But maybe just five to 10 affirmations, you write those down every night before bed. You can also include um, like a section for reflections. If you're journaling every day, it's a reflection of how your day went. What are the things I did really well today? What are the things I, where I kind of missed the mark a little bit? What do I wish I had done differently? Um, a format that I really like is I like, I wish, I wonder. I've got this from my design thinking background. So I like is here's what went really, really well. I wish is here's what I wish went differently or what I wish I could have done better. And I wonder is, I wonder how, like some really big ideas, I wonder how I could do things differently moving forward. I wonder what new things I could incorporate, what really big audacious goals I could use to help with doing something different next time. So you don't have to do that like I wish I wonder, but if you need help with framing your reflection section, your reflection section, that can be really helpful. And then if you're like me and you're just like a monthly journaler for the most part, you can still do a reflection section and I'm probably going to include that in my journaling practice moving forward. If it would not be triggering to you, you can also do a manifestation check-in. Where am I with my manifestation? What is my progress? Am I seeing signs? Are we back together? Did I manifest the job? You can totally do that. I, I'm, I'm giving like, be cautious with this one because it's easy to get stuck in the analysis paralysis stage. It's easy to get too focused on signs or to have no movement and this check-in causes a spiral. So I would say use caution with this, maybe don't include it, but if you've had really big movement, like you have your manifestation and you're on to the next one, it might be cool to include a little manifestation check-in. You should also consider including an emotional check-in. This is for your emotional well-being. You guys know I'm a huge advocate for mental health on this channel. And if you're manifesting goals that are really important to you, it can be easy to fall into a place of negativity or doubt or fear, or maybe you manifested your thing and now you're feeling really happy and grateful and excited for the future. Whatever it is, you might wanna include an emotional, like just like a space just a space in your journaling routine for how am I feeling and why do I think I'm feeling this way and how long have I been feeling this way, right? And the why is also cool because that can help with uncovering some potential limiting beliefs that you can heal through self-concept work, but an emotional check-in is a really powerful thing to also include in your journaling practice. If you are including like non-manifestation-y things, in your journal, like earlier I was like, you could put regular goals in it, like I'm gonna remodel my kitchen or whatever. You could also have like a little progress tracker. My background, I'm always like tech, design thinking, project management, it's all that y'all. I'm almost 40, I've got a lot of professional experience under my belt. So uh, like because of my project management background, I'm like, oh yeah, like you could totally include a little progress tracker of like, here's the progress that I'm making just on my life goals, right? Like maybe you're finishing up college, you're not as old as I am, maybe you're finishing up college and you know, you were hoping to get a 3.6 GPA for this semester, but you actually got a 3.8. That's huge progress and might be worth including in there. If you are doing daily journaling, you could include like a lesson of the day based on how my day unfolded. Here is what I learned today, good or bad. Or if you're a monthly journaler like me, it could be what is my lesson for this month? What do I really feel like the theme was, the message that I needed to hear this month, right? So you capture that all down, reflect on it for a moment and see how has this lesson or this message or this experience helped me grow. And then finally, you can also write down journal script your visualization, okay? If you're someone who's like a little bit creative like I am, like there's a reason my, my fun little hobby is content creation because I really enjoy the creativity that comes with it. So if you're someone who's very creative, you have an active imagination, you might have fun writing down your visualizations. So if you are a person who uses visualization to manifest, while you're doing your journaling, 
if this is a prompt you want to include, you can kind of sit down, loop your visualization a few times. If you don't know what I mean by loop it, I'm going to link a video right here. You can watch it after this one. It explains how to visualize well to manifest, and that'll help you understand the, the importance of looping and how short to keep it and what to include and all those things. So you're looping your visualization a few times. Pay attention to some of the details that you have in your visualization, right? Like if it's an SP manifestation and they're reaching for your hand and their fingers are wrapping between yours, what does that feel like? Do you have like a really masculine energy man and he works outside and you can feel the, the calluses, you know, right? What is this part of our palm called? What is that? I don't know. Like, like the, the back, the palm knuckles, maybe you're feeling... <laughs> I didn't smoke weed. This is just how my brain works. I'm like, oh, the palm knuckles. Um, maybe you're feeling the calluses on the palm knuckles, huh? Um, or maybe you're feeling their wedding ring on their hand because now you're married in your end state. Or if you're manifesting a new job, your visualization might be walking into your office and sitting down at your computer and you're looping that instead. Loop it a few times, pick up some of those details and write it out in your journal almost like you are an author and you're writing a story or you are a narrator. You know, like when you're watching a movie or a TV show, you got Bridgerton on and they're like, do you all right? Like that's the narrator. So maybe you are imagining you're the narrator and you're writing out this visualization and you're describing it to someone who's never seen this thing before and you need to make it very clear and very vivid so that the reader, dear reader, can... <laughs> can understand what the visualization is. And again, just like I mentioned earlier with writing the affirmations, sometimes writing things down can be really helpful, including your visualizations, which seems counterintuitive because you're like, I'm visualizing it, now I'm writing it. Yeah, why not? Why not? There's no rules here. Just do what intuitively feels good to you and what feels productive to you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Y'all, I'm putting out a lot of extra videos this week. I really wanna get out a lot of really good content for y'all to close out 2023. But even if you're watching this video far, far in the future, like it's 2035 or something, and I'm like a hot 50 year old, whew, I, th the journal prompts still apply. This is all still gonna apply. I'm just trying to give you guys a lot of different stuff to wrap up the year with. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. If you've missed some of the other videos, click the notifications bell. Why haven't, you, why haven't you done it yet? It'll tell you when I post a video. And then you can go watch it and you can like it and you can comment your favorite emoji on it so that it helps me for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, bye friends.